Have you ever wondered how outside chemicals get into concrete? Well, some of them swim. My name is Tyler Lay, and I heart concrete. I'm showing a bridge and a part of a building. This is the bridge deck, some beams. This is the bent cap, some columns. This is a footing and, and a slab for a building. Now, there are some certain places where outside chemicals try to get into each one of those structures. For example, if this bridge is in seawater, then this area inside the concrete may be attacked. Chlorides may actually try to get inside that concrete. Same thing could happen in this footing. If there's a perched water table and there's, there's some nasty chemicals floating around inside there, again, they may try to get inside of the concrete. Now that's not the only place I'm gonna talk about today. I'm also talking about places where the uh, details may be off a little bit. For example, let's say some water gets caught up here on the bridge right here in the corner, or maybe in this joint. Water may fill this joint up and maybe it's got deicer salts in it. Maybe it's got some other nasty chemicals in it. And over time as it sits there, it's gonna actually try to penetrate into the concrete into this concrete and into this concrete. There's also a chance we may have a crack in the structure or we may have a crack inside the deck themselves. And that's a place where again, if this is the crack and this is the concrete, then that crack will actually fill with, with, with fluid. These ions inside of the solution may try to penetrate into the concrete. These are all examples of things I'm, I'm gonna be talking about today. All of these, each one of these, is a place where there's a high concentration of ions inside the water and a low concentration of ions inside of the concrete. And the ions, they swim. Now swimming ions, you're like, what? That's crazy, what's he talking about, swimming? Well. Let's talk about diffusion, because that's what every one of these things are. It is the movement of molecules or ions from a high concentration to a low concentration. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say I have a cup of water and I throw in some salt, okay, a chunk of salt. And over time, those salt molecules are actually gonna move a little bit further away. Then over more time, they're gonna move even further away until they're somewhat of a uniform concentration. And this process is called diffusion. You might be saying, that's cool and all, but how does this work in concrete? What does it look like in concrete? Well, I'm gonna try to show you. To do that, we're gonna do an experiment where we're gonna actually use x-rays to zap a sample and then take a picture of what makes it through to the other side. Some of these x-rays are gonna be absorbed into the sample and some of them are gonna make it through to the camera. And every one of these pictures is called a radiograph. And if you have had an x-ray done to your body, then you have had a radiograph done to you. Now, in this picture here, I'm showing a sample and it's got some solution on top of it. And we're going to image it over time as this solution goes into the sample. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The picture on the left is just cement paste with water on top and we can't see anything. But the picture on the right, has iodide on it, okay? Potassium iodide. It's a tracer. If you've ever drank in like barium sulfate or iodide and then had x-rays done to your body, they can see where you're plugged up or where you're leaking on the inside. We're gonna do that with concrete. So to do this, we're gonna take a picture before adding any solution. That's on the left. And then after some period of time, we're gonna take another picture and we can see this part is a little bit more gray. Why is it gray? Because that tracer shows up as gray. That tracer, as it goes in, we can see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this right image and we're going to subtract it from the left image. Basically take everything on the right, treat it like a number, like a gray number, and subtract it from all of the numbers or the gray on the left. And we're gonna get a picture. Remember, that's the difference that is what's darker gray in this picture than this picture. And you can see the ions. You can see where they're changing. You can see as they penetrate. What? I think this will make more sense when I show you lots of different days. This is the original sample. 
And this is where we put the iodide on top for seven hours. And you can see the gray, it's penetrated just a little. And then now after five days, it's penetrated more, and then 10 days, and then 28 days, we can see it going through. This is diffusion. This is exactly what I was talking about. We have a high concentration up here, low concentration down here, and these ions are swimming. They are swimming into the concrete. Here are three different water to cement ratios. They all have different pore systems and they've all been ponded for 20 days. And you can see the ones with the lowest water cement ratio, the ions didn't go as far. And the one with the highest water cement ratio, the ions went much further. Now, instead of just pictures, we can actually get graphs. We can actually use standards where we know the amounts of iodide in them. And we can get a concentration over the depth. And again, these are throwing, showing these three different water cement ratios, 0 0.35, 0 0.40, and 0.45 and we can show the different rates of penetration. Pretty wild, right? So I, I know that test was pretty crazy what I just showed you. There's actually a standard ASTM test to do this on concrete. The way it works is you take concrete that's saturated. You actually dunk it under water and leave it under water for a long period of time. So it's not gonna take up anymore. Then you put it in a salt solution. You coat it all the way around on all the sides with something called an impermeable membrane. So stuff can't go in and out. Stuff can only go in and out on the surface and that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna penetrate. Just like the stuff I just showed you. It's gonna penetrate over time. And then how the test works is after a certain amount of time, usually lying around 35 days, you take the sample out of the solution and you grind it layer by layer by layer. And what you'll find is at the surface, there'll be a high concentration and a little bit lower, there'll be a lower one, and a lower one, and a lower one, and a lower one. So people interpolate in between these lines, and they get a curve that looks something like this. Now, we can rotate this. This is the top surface. This is like the top of the sample, and this is like the bottom of the sample, and this is the stuff penetrating through it. Now, we can rotate it and bring it down here to the bottom, where I'm showing you concentration versus depth. And there are three important terms here. There's the surface concentration. That's how much concentration is at the very, very surface of the concrete. There's the effective diffusion coefficient, which is kind of like the slope of this line. And then there's something called the depth of penetration down here at the bottom. Now, curves are cool and all, we can compare curves, but what people like to do is get numbers, like single sets of numbers. So they try to turn this almost into like a triangle. Okay, where this is kind of like a slope and this is kind of like the y-intercept. And to solve this equation, this is fixed second law. Okay, he's the guy that came up with this concept, this uniform diffusion. The simplified solution to that differential equation is this. The concentration at the depth at a given time is equal to the surface concentration times one minus the error function. Yeah, it's a weird math term. The error function times the depth divided by two times the square root of the effective diffusion coefficient times time. Now the cool thing about this is that everything in this is a constant, except for the surface concentration and the effective diffusion coefficient. That's it. Those are the only two terms you have to fit from these equations. And using these two numbers, you can actually forecast into the future how long your concrete's gonna last, or compare qualities of concrete to one another. Here's an example with this table. Here's where they have three different water to cement ratios, and again, they're showing three different diffusion coefficients. Here's it with paste, and here's the information with concrete. Hey, thanks everybody for watching my video. Subscribe if you like it. Give me a thumbs up. Oh, check out the bell. The bell will notify you when I release new videos. Take care, everybody. Bye.